TM. Hi everyone, we're, we're back with the speed run videos and um, we're actually now getting to a much higher level, the 1700 level. I'll try to go through from the start again, but we have moved up right from the beginning to this level with minimum mishaps so far. Uh, I am in this game going to play the Dutch defence for the first time. It's my favourite opening, the Dutch is where you played this one and uh, the idea is to control the centre but also later on we give ourselves some attacking chances where we're gaining space the king side and you should really when you're looking at attacking you should always look at your pawn structure your pawn structure really is telling you where you should attack and you should attack in the areas where you have more space generally where you have a hold and because my pawn is over here that's the kind of area I'm going to attack in later now the classical Dutch and again, you can learn more about the classical Dutch, my chessboard course, my ginger GM course, if you want a cheaper one, uh, or, or my classical Dutch book I got out, is this system where you develop so you can castle. So this is kind of stage one, and I'm still following very good principles. And now the classical Dutch is where you put the pawn next to this pawn. And the general idea of putting the pawn here is that you want to play E5 and control that square. If I get my two pawns here, I'm doing very well. I can't do that at the moment because my opponent has two pieces defending that square. Now, the best move in this position is the knight coming in here. Why is this the best move? Um, well, the idea is you're a little bit more cramped than white, so exchanges help you, and you free up this square for the bishop. And that is all part of the plan of controlling e5 when I go e5. He's put pressure on my knight, so I'm going to take that one. If he takes with a queen, okay, he takes with a pawn. Now taking with a pawn indicates that he wants to go e4 and I've got to be ready to play e5. So now my knight comes out and the point is if he attacks my knight it can come over here and start playing against his two pawns. This is all in the theory. If you want to learn more about this and again I recommend my Ginger GM course is only like £20 I think for 8 hours of learning. I've got loads of videos on my YouTube channel for free and my chessable course on the classical Dutch is a very in-depth look at this opening. It's a fun opening. I'll be honest, it's a hard opening to learn. Uh, it's not a simple beginner's opening, but once you learn it, it's a really, really good opening to know. And eventually, I'm now happy, I've got my E5 move in. And this pawn structure, um, it's really about getting the right pawn structure is nice for me. And another move I like playing is F4 in these positions, because it gives me chances to attack his king, having a pawn here I might be able to play f3. Um, in the classical Dutch you often leave this bishop at home for a long time because it might swing all the way over there in one move and to my eyes it looks like I've got an advantage on both sides of the board. His pawns are weak here and if I can move my knight to this square later on that would be lovely. Okay let's just defend the knight I'm gonna get more control over this square because if I move my knight here Okay, now f3 is looking very, very strong because he's lost control of that square. So I now switch into the other side of the board. Let's do that. We'll play f3, forcing his bishop to a very embarrassing square. Now, coming back here, there's nothing wrong with this because I can try to come here later. But is there something stronger? Bishop d7, I quite like because I think it will force his queen to go to here. And if he goes here, it fits in my plan of playing a5 in getting a grip on all these squares. And I also just develop a piece to a slightly better square. Here, this is tremendous Dutch. Um, probably am, I think it's fair to say, the world's leading expert on the classical Dutch. Um, and now I'm gonna go on and lose probably. <laughs> well, I am, you know, I, I'm one of the only grandmasters who plays it regularly. I thought this was a, an interesting idea actually. We'll have to defend that one, but luckily we can. And um, this is the kind of position which you really dream of getting. There's a couple of things you can now do. So his bishop is dead. I've got structural advantages here. I don't want to allow him to get counterplay there. But he's, is he, So I'm just going to stop it. Let's just stop any of that with this plan I mentioned before. I'm thinking about how... Okay, now this next move of mine is key to the classical Dutch. Queen e8. The queen is so well placed on h5 because at the end of the day, checkmate ends the game. I've held up everything over here, so let's just try and kill him over here. I'm looking at all my pieces, and now the rook swinger I think is just good. I could try to swap his knight off first, but I don't think I need to. 
this pawn is my only thing which might be a problem, so I'm probably going to bring the other rook in here. And I'm, I'm, I've now stopped everything that my opponent can hope of doing. He might have to get desperate and play this move, but I can just win a pawn uh, and take it. And my basic idea is rook here, then my favourite idea, the rook swinger, and take here, checkmate. This pawn gives me that hold, that attacking position. I'm totally in control of every area of the board here. This shows that knowing the opening very well can help you so much in the middle game. It's not about just memorizing the opening moves. Uh, what it what it is about when you're playing chess, it's it's about um, knowing the opening moves well, obviously, but you've also really um, you, you've really got to know why you're playing those opening moves. You know what kind of middle game position are you trying to achieve? Now, just looking at this, my opponent is defending well, so I can't just take here checkmate, but I might be able to, I'm going to bring another one into the fun. This guy wants to join in, but more importantly, I want my rook to come here and not get hit by any bishop c1, and my winning plan then is to get rid of the only piece that's defending h2, which is his knight. This is the focal point of my attack. Actually, working out focal points when you're attacking, uh, key points in your opponent's position is it can be very useful. What is the weakness that I want to attack in my opponent's position? Well, it's h2. Now we might be able to get a little bit of counterplay here, but let's let's see. Let's just try to checkmate him. And if you home in on them, you can really work out how to break through. My breakthrough here is well, I'm just going to try to get rid of this knight and come. And then I can come through here. So that's my main my main way of thinking. Okay, so he has brought this one back, but I think I can continue with my plan. Do we throw the knight in? Yeah, that knight is a lovely knight on that square. Remember, we can play on both sides of the board. Even from the opening, remember, I mentioned that knight having the potential to come here. We can even think about winning a pawn, but I want to force his queen a little bit away from here. But again, my main wing idea is just to take this one and then come into h2. So the focal point was h2. What's defending h2? The knight. How do I get rid of the knight? I exchange it off for my bishop, and then I come in. So this is just my very simple, logical thinking. And again, please note in this game, I haven't done anything extraordinarily tactical-wise at all. I've known the opening. I've known the middle game ideas. I've known this idea of getting the two pawns here. I've known the idea of getting the pawn to f3. I've known the idea of holding him up like this on this side. I've known the idea of getting a knight here. This is all experience. This is where experience can be extremely, extremely powerful. And as I've known all of those ideas, I'm just following up on that with standard attacking attacking principles. Okay, so he is still defending very well, I have to say. Maybe his only defensive move, but can I come in here? And I feel the answer is probably a yes. This is a nice move. I've got double power coming into h2 be amazed if he's able to defend this one and there's a, maybe a very nice queen sacrifice checkmate and it's going to work that way to to finish off the game queen h1 next move is a beautiful checkmate look at the power of that pawn a beautiful pawn creating a beautiful checkmate now what did my opponent do wrong well he, he, he didn't do that much wrong it was just having a very good understanding of the opening from my side this position all up to about this here is in my chessable classical Dutch or similar positions so by mastering that course you should get a position like this and then if we go into the middle game I know that the right plan is just to make sure that this move is a bit hard for him to play make sure I control the Queen side make sure that I get my Queen over here because that was the winning idea if I can play a free play a free the Rook swinger a very key idea combining all of these but at the same time please note how important it was to stop my opponent's counterplay it may look very easy what I'm doing I'm gonna now also change my opening to the French defense it may look very easy what I'm doing but it, it, it there's a lot of not just playing my own ideas but stopping my opponent's ideas this is so important now I'm gonna play um, the French defense we're changing the opening a little bit and we do have the exchange French a lot at this level, and this is one reason I don't like playing the French all the time because the exchange just bores me a bit. In symmetrical pawn structures, it's all about the pieces. I'm going to play this move to try and unbalance things a little bit, and now we just have to develop. 
I can't do anything particularly special here. I might even take the knight because the knight coming there is a very good square for his knight. And I know I'm giving him the two bishops, but I'm unstabilizing the position to try and make it a little bit more interesting. Now, let's take that one. My opponent, again, moving very quickly here. He has sacrificed a pawn, and I would have thought he might want to think about that a little bit more. And he's now sacrificing another one. Now, yeah, he does get a bit of play, but if I can get out of this, I don't normally grab pawns, but I will be a pawn up. Now, this one is also very interesting, but knight takes, pawn takes, queen takes, check. Knight d7 looks good for me. Okay, why don't I play this? I don't need to doubt my calculations. I've calculated knight takes, and he, why is he playing so quickly? I don't understand, because surely this position is just losing uh, for my opponent. I say losing, I mean, I've got two pieces for the rook, which is a very, very good deal in a position. Yeah, he, maybe he's up, up on points here, but two pieces for the rook, I will always take. Two pieces for the rook, uh, I've got two knights for the rook, they can be very, very strong later on. Maybe b5 was, I don't know, was it, could I played it more sensibly? I, I, I guess so, but I'm very happy with this position. I've got a very nice square in the middle of the board. This square here is my key square. Again, I'm thinking of key squares that I want to control. So if I get my knight here, um, then I control this key square greatly. But let's now give that knight, that bishop a kick. Don't like having pieces in my own half. My opponent wants the ending. So let's just see if we can disjoint that rook a little bit, see where he's going to move it. I think that makes sense. And he's moving it to... Okay, now we're going to play this double thing. I don't really want to swap queens here because when you've got the two minor pieces, you want to keep the queens on the board. And he's now just playing too quickly, this guy. He's fallen into another trap, which I thought was pretty obvious with his pieces like this. He's not looking at my ideas enough. He's playing just a little bit too speedily here. Earlier on, it was so complicated and he, and he spent like 20 seconds to go into this. You know, honestly, if you're going to play Blitz, if you're going to play at the speed you're playing, why not play Bullet? Why not play 3-minute? If you're playing 5-minute, use your time. There's no point having 4 minutes in a lost position. <laughs> you know, if you're ever losing a game, whether it's Blitz or anything, where you have the majority of your time um, left when you're losing, something's going wrong. Why, 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 why are you doing it like that? You shouldn't be doing it like that. You know, don't play any more blitz. It's crazy. You know, don't do it to yourself. It's painful. And again here, it's a pretty... Even though he's got two pieces for uh, the knight, this should be a very straightforward win. He can't win these ones quickly, though. You know, you've got to show a lot of patience. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is just improve my king's safety. I'm going to put it on a dart square. I'm not really worried about what he's doing over here. I don't think it's going anywhere. I like my king here. I get it off any back rank checks. I'm going to just improve my structure a little bit. Okay, he's trying to move his rook in, but I can always move my knight away, which I might do now, but just to show that his rook has to go passive again. And I'm just going to now improve this. I like this move because my knight might want to go here. It defends my knight. Anything that improves my position a little bit, I'm going to do. I'm going to come back now. And now that I've improved my king, I want to maximize these pieces and I'm going to do that now by um, okay he does want to come in here so I wanted to take control of the open file I'm just now thinking I was going to go rook here but this coming in here my queen can come back that looks good for me so I'm now going to try to come in on the open file and he's got played it immediately but again he's not really thinking about what my reply is he's seeing a plan and playing it just a bit more patient needed we might see that now I can swap queens, which I kind of like, but I would also see if there's something more dynamic. This is the focal point of my next attack. Now I notice that I give him a check here and I play rook here, the focal point here. And I say that is that's the only pawn that was weak around his king. So my eyes were drawn to that. Remember, look at, look at the squares around your opponent's king and try to find out the focal points that you can, that you can come into on those squares. And it's clear, now that, uh, well, that focal point was uh, pretty, pretty, pretty bad. So a bit of a strange game there. Again, my, you know, it's exchange French. When your opponent plays an opening you don't like, well, sometimes it happens. You've got to be patient. 
I took this knight off because I was worried about it coming here. And we got a very kind of even position. I think this move is good because he's playing on the light square. So this is a good move. But he needed to slow down here. Maybe even taking my pawn force first was okay. Maybe this is all right. But again, he plays these moves very quickly. He enters this tactical exchange and he spent 10, 14 seconds to get a position which is incredibly complex. Maybe even the, the computer likes white here, but I know from practice having the two knights against these minor pieces, it can it, it is a very good trade, I feel. Especially when you could you have good squares for your knights. And here I have very good squares in the centre of the board for my knights. Okay. So we're moving up the rating. We're now 1740. Woohoo! Back to the Jabava London system. Uh, okay, so this is a way to try and confuse the Jabava London. There's two decent moves here. You can take it or push on. I like getting space in chess with the white pieces, so I'm going to push on. And now I'm going to try to just hold on to this square. So I'm defending it with my knight. And again, very natural moves. This is my most important square. Let's defend it, get the center. My bishop can develop. My opponent has now lost a tempo to get what is a check Benoni. Not a very good opening anyway. So my first thought is, as he's lost the tempo, I'm gonna open the position up. This move is not always good against the check Benoni, but he's lost a whole tempo. So I've got one extra piece developed. So I wanna open it up quickly. This pawn is very nice. So that's why I'm playing this move. I could have played a more positional game, but as he's wasted time, I'm just trying to open up the middle a little bit. And this is, obviously the focal point of my attack and my development for the time being. I'm developing, I'm attacking, and now we can think about the next stage of what we do. This seems very, very risky to me, this move. Is he really going to take here? I don't, I don't believe it. And with when a queen comes there, a very standard maneuver is to move the knight to this square. So let's see, if I go here and he takes it, can't my knight, I like this move. This is when you haven't played c4 in these positions this square is very very powerful and again he plays a move without looking at what my plan was you know he did not look at what my plan was why did i move the knight there the idea is to move the knight here to attack his queen and i think now he can just resign he did not look at my plan biggest mistake in chess we saw this from one of the beginners levels when your opponent plays a move try and look what their idea is and that is a 10 move win with very simple, nothing, nothing. I didn't do anything special chess there. So let's just, we can go through the whole of that game. So take the center, control the center with a piece. If he takes, my knight is beautiful. And now I'm just re-exerting my control over that, allowing my bishop to develop. My opponent has played e6 and e5. He hasn't developed any pieces. Alarm bells are ringing. I should open up the position, f4. My opponent defends that square. I develop a piece, attack that focal point. I naturally recapture. And now this uh, probably the star move from me. This is another mistake. Don't move your queen out too early. It's very greedy taking a pawn. Are you gonna grab that pawn? I don't think so with my knight coming in here. What he should have done is concentrate on developing his pieces, getting castled. These are just key basic facts of the position. So for example, I think, you know, a 2000 player would have played bishop e7, knight f6. But again, my alarm bells are ringing here. That move looks strange. How can I take advantage of it? Well, I know that if I get my knight to this square, possibly with another knight coming here, it's very good. My opponent did not look at what my idea was behind this move. He played very quickly. If he'd have seen, just looked at my move, he would have seen I want to come here. And I think. He should have then for gone a6. And the point of a6 is that if I go here, at least he can keep control of d6. And my knight can't come here. And he can hold this position a lot better. I'd probably play a4 to stop b5, but the game goes on. And as soon as he played this move, I continued with this idea. And I think he's just lost now. He loses his queen. But what else can he do? If he goes here, I now go here. And I'm winning this one with check. If he goes all the way back here, again, I can take this pawn or I can try to think about even coming in and taking it with a check. If he takes here, I can use a pin on his knight and his position is crumbling in all these situations. So um, 
in actual fact, at this level, my last two games, even though they've been 1,700, have played a lot worse than um, some of the lower rating. So let's stick with the French defence. We played that in the first game, so we'll play it again. And I'm now going to go into it, see what my opponent has up his sleeve. Another exchange French. It's amazing how popular the exchange French is at this level. Let's go with the same opening we had before. There's nothing wrong with the exchange French. Do not get me wrong. Exchange French is totally okay. I think in this game, I won't take on F3 if he does the same thing. It's unbelievable. I'm just going to develop my pieces. I'm going to get castled. It's an equal position. And he has played this, so nice idea. I'm going to make exchanges. And I've got to block this one. I want to get castled, so I'm going to block it. All these moves seem very logical. Blocking the queen, trying to get castled on my next move. I've noticed that he can grab a pawn here. So he has grabbed the pawn. Now, that does seem okay but I have to admit I, I, I didn't see this check um, and I'm thinking like it's probably alright for me though why because I've got three pieces developed I'm castling next move I might have some compensation here but or am I just imagining that I mean do I take this knight but then he's got this check later I'm gonna castle because then I've got everything done. But he has grabbed the pawn. So maybe, you know, maybe this, see, this is why I grabbed the knight on this square. Okay, now this one, I was hoping I could just go here. And I'm not sure he should have played this knight here. Because is his knight, it looked, it looked like it's one, maybe one of those slightly artificial moves. You know, you play a move that looks good because, yeah, I attack the queen. But as soon as my queen moves, had he taken there, I would have got a check. I was threatening a nasty discovered check, and I'm kind of thinking, what's his knight now doing here? And now my eyes are really getting drawn to his king, because he has no pieces defending it. In this kind of structure, you normally have a knight on the square, but he doesn't have that. So I'm getting really drawn in now to ideas with a Greek gift, ideas with an attack, or ideas of just coming in with the knight first. All of these look very tempting. So which one do we play? Now this one, check here, knight check, king comes back, it's not working. I could even try and bring my queen over there, that's a very intriguing idea. But I'm also thinking what my opponent wants to play, he wants to develop his knight. So if I go here, it stops his knight developing because I can take it. What's his idea? He wants to go bishop here, does he? Interesting, okay. So... Bishop here trying to get rid of my piece. It's an interesting move, I have to say. So do I have to be a little bit quick here? I am a pawn down. This one is not working. His queen is okay, but these pieces are very away from his king if I can launch an attack. What about this move? Let's have a look at this a bit more. H3. Do I have anything there? I can't see it. Does something like this make... Okay, I like that move. I'm spending time here because it seems critical. I like this move because... Number one, if he goes bishop here, I have bishop h2 and queen takes rook. So that was my threat. And now, yes, he's got his rook to the open file, but I might now have the Greek gift. Takes, takes, check, king back here. But he has bishop f4, but I've now got my queen nearer his king. So again, wow, what is that? He's not looking at these guys, what are they doing? He was playing so well, but he just didn't look at my move. He just... Unbelievable. I mean, like, he played so well, but he didn't look at my last move. Okay, I'm just going to stop his king running away. And my, you know, his position was absolutely fine there. It was just a very exciting position. But he didn't look at my last move. And now, well, I can take this pawn. Can come. Okay, I mean, it's not game over. But it is very promising now, as I have the attack. I'm just moving all my pieces into squares where they have a lot of use and all his pieces are offside so it's not game over He's, he has managed to defend could I have taken that one last move was that a bit more dynamic because if rook takes I can win his rook maybe but this this also looks good I'm just preparing this knight to come here stopping this move as well because I defended that one so I, I'm getting all my pieces into the attack it does look very good king here let's look at some little tactics rook here okay he's trying to get around to defend but i feel it's too late now this one would stop his queen coming back and that's why he put his queen here so let's play oh no but then he's going to go here 
Okay, we'll stick with this one. Both our knights are going to come in anyway. So let's just throw them into the position. Must be winning this. Must be winning. I don't see how he can really think about defending. I mean, he played so well, but he, again, he just his big mistake, he didn't look at my move. You know, he just, all he had to do was look at my move and stop my threat. Yes, I had a little bit of pressure on his king side, but he had won a pawn. So it was really up in the air, this game. And now my basic idea here, maybe I bring one. If if I can't see an immediate win, I'll bring more pieces into the attack. I can, by the way, win this pawn. I know I've been able to do this for a long time, but I thought he could go rook. You know, if I'd have done that earlier, he could go rook g1. And also, by checking him, it sort of seems to help his king run to the side of the board he wants to go to anyway. Um, okay, now he's playing on this side of the board. This can't work. His king cannot survive. And my first idea is to now check take, because I'm threatening here. I'm a little bit short of time. This looks winning to me. Maybe there's an easier way to win. But I often say, if you see one win, you don't need to find another win. I know there's that analogy try to find a better move but if you're winning don't just play the bloody win and this with the big threat of rook takes e3 or knight takes e3 which is going to win a piece of free just seems completely winning i'm pawn up and now we can slam that one into the board we're going to win our piece back at any moment but first of all his king has to survive which it's not going to do it looks well i mean it might do king d2 is probably the only surviving move this one doesn't work because I'm going to checkmate him on c2. Can you see how here? Um, and knight and queen, they coordinate incredibly well together. And next move is going to be this one, checkmate. So there we go, and that is the end of that. Okay, well, an interesting game. My opponent played well in the opening there. And, um, you know, having a look at this again, his opening was, was you know... Very interesting. I think I should be playing knight c6 here then so that I can take that knight when it comes there. This move looks logical, but actually this got me into a little bit of trouble because suddenly he has these two ideas. Maybe I have enough compensation. He plays the critical move. He grabs this pawn. But his first mistake, I don't like this move. He doesn't need to get exotic here. He's a pawn up. He should go back to castling and bringing his pieces out. This move actually seems to help me because now I'm threatening a big discovered check. If he takes my bishop, I get a check in. That's got to help me. And after he castles, well, all of a sudden, my bishop is a good piece. And he, this knight has seemed to have wandered to the wrong side of the board. Now, this was, I think, the star move because it stops two of his main ideas. Knight c3, I take his bishop. And my main threat is taking there and taking his rook. So this was a good move. And the other idea, I'm playing a move that stops his plans, but also improves my position. That's the key to chess. Stop your opponent, improve you. And the point is, I'm also improving my position because I've managed to get my queen from this passive square to this aggressive square. And I was fully expecting him now to play not this move because I have ideas of knight g4, but h3. And I was fully expecting some position like this when I think I have adequate compensation because I can now start throwing my pieces in and you know it looks a bit scary for him but probably no more than adequate compensation thanks for watching please like and subscribe uh it makes a big difference uh you know uh want to get the viewers up i hope this is helping your chess if you think it is also you can check out my chessboard courses and my website gingergm.com descriptions links in descriptions i think is what i meant to say mm -hmm.